So I am your Joseph Kovalov, and uh, I have with me Ekaterina Filatova. We will be speaking very slowly, so everyone has uh, the opportunity to come back from the fresh break. So let me start from telling you that Joseph and I are here because we are interested in transcreation and adaptation of advertising materials. We've been in this field for many years. We have hands-on experience, so we make money doing that. But we also like talking about this at different conferences, especially at UTIC. As practice shows, our conversations at UTIC, UTIC camp uh, have some practical implications. For example, two years ago in 2019, uh, we uh, were discuss we had a discussion with SDL representative whether it is possible to implement something for transcreation in traders. Several months ago, Paul Filkin presented plugin for transcreation, uh, which is now on sale. We don't know, unfortunately, how successful it is, but it definitely is there. And Paul Filkin. Uh, told that uh, everything had been created here at UT camp and uh, he even used a photo of us. This is what inspires us. That is why we would like our interactive discussion to have practical implications. So not uh, probably, uh, it will probably not lead uh, to creation of a plugin, but maybe it will have some other implications. My name is Katya Filatova. I've uh, been into the field of uh, transcreation and translation for many years. Uh, this is the field that chose me myself. As for other way, uh, types of translation, I'm not really into them. I've been at uh, marketing translation and transcreation for many years together with Katerina. We were speakers at several conferences in 2013 and 2014. We were discussing uh, creative uh, translation when the word transcreation wasn't uh, popular back then. So transcreation was going back then. Now I work uh, as a full-time professional at a company, but of course I have a lot of experience. Therefore, today we are discussing transcreation today. So how this the topic of this discussion, well, it's not a presentation, it's a discussion or a meeting. Last year, uh, we met at UTCAMP because UTCAMP is the father or the mother of all ideas, the grandfather. Uh, so UTC is the father and the conference is the mother. It gives birth to many trends and ideas. So last year, because of the limitations due to the pandemic, a lot of people couldn't make it to the conference. That is why we met in Zoom. Kata and I, we were moderating a discussion in one of those interactive Zoom rooms, and we were discussing transcreation in general. Uh, we had with us Pavel Dunay, maybe some of you uh, know him. He's a patriarch of UTIC. Pavel suggested that in some cases uh, ads or marketing materials, marketing texts can be translated from unknown languages using inline translation. Back then in that discussion we had a translator of poetry who said, well, yes, of course, we use this inline translation for translating poetry from unknown languages. This idea seemed interesting to us, and that is why we decided to tell you more about it. But, uh, okay, so now you can see our presentation. Maybe you know this uh, literary translation, Vladimir Babkov. He's a big name in uh, literature translation. Uh, he translated some of the Harry Potter books together with Goloshev. So we're talking about a lot of patriarchs today. So recently on his Facebook, Vladimir said, 
he was talking about uh, translating books through a third language. I see two reasons which might uh, which might lead to translation of translation altogether. There are no good translators from the source language to our native language. So this situation is quite possible. But there is a translator from this question, from this language to a third language. And that is why it is often that we translate through English. Such practice exists in literature translation, in poetry translation. We know that Pasternak, Akhmatova, Tarkovsky, uh, they translated uh, uh, Eastern poets into Russian uh, using uh, other language, using inline translation. So are they worse than them? So are there any translators who translate exclusively poetry? So we are not surprised. That is why let's uh, talk about, not about the poetry translation, but about translation of marketing or advertising texts. Van Joseph uh, told about this idea of Pavel Dunayev. Uh, this idea seemed interesting, but uh, the reaction was quite uh, uh, different. There were many questions. Why shall we discuss that? Is that possible at all? So it seems to me that you also have a lot of emotions when hearing this idea, but we decided to uh, to try this idea at Hitika and the reaction was uh, also quite uh, uh, different. For example, we had a presentation by Mike Horbunov at the localization track uh, back on Wednesday. He was uh, uh, talking about using MT in his company uh, that uh, uses a translation for localization, he said that uh, they are using MT uh, in everyday life, but uh, they don't use it for marketing translations or trans texts or where there are a lot of cultural references or references to pop culture and so on and so forth. And they, they don't use it for new projects, they only use it for old projects where there are a lot of glossaries, for example. There were also guys uh, who uh, localize a simple app and uh, for example, Sasha told me, uh, you are about to, to talk about uh, something which is quite unusual. This is a nonsense. But uh, we talked about this idea to Konstantin Dranch. He was uh, angry. Well, he was skeptical, I would say. He said that uh, this, uh, this is very difficult, but we would like to try and test it in real life and to see whether it is possible to discuss at all. Uh, we are human beings, though we are speakers. You cannot tell that, but we are alive. We are alive human beings. And when we were thinking about this discussion, uh, we had some ideas, we had expectations, and we almost had conclusions. But of course, we won't uh, run ahead of our time. We would like to talk to the audience, and we would like to make these conclusions together. Well, I hope that uh, you won't run away uh, when we said that we would like to talk to you to, to have this uh, discussion interactive, but we really need you for this discussion. That is why we are really happy that uh, there are a lot of people here, despite that uh, it is evening and everyone is tired. Okay, so let's proceed to our presentation. When we are talking about uh, creative translation and transcreation, we're not talking only about uh, translation of creative slogans, short slogans, for example that Nike or other companies have. We're talking about a wider range of texts that don't only convey information. So these are not legal medical translations. These are marketing texts or ads whose idea is, whose aim is not to convey information, but to, they have another goal. That is why the translated text also has to reach that same goal. So we are talking about creative translation in general. So what's your opinion? We all know that technical text, um, um, medicine translation, uh, use uh, the machine translation. So what's your opinion comparing with the uh, technical text? Uh, um, is the machine translation better or worse? Do you have any assumptions regarding that? Uh, it, it is doing uh, 
course. And of course, uh, uh, you're going to say it depends, uh, and uh, there are other things, but the first reaction was that it is worth. But we are not going to, to talk that uh, we are going to translate everything with the machine translation from the um, source original language to our language. We are talking about uh, the chance to um, talk uh, from the sideline, uh, interlinear translation. And I would also um, I would like to say that this type of translation is not tested by us, and we have never tested it yet. And um, once uh, we reach uh, an interesting conclusion, uh, uh, we will tell them. So it is kind of uh, um, half a scientific. Um, uh, instance and as I said, I have said in the morning, uh, the volume of contacts is been rising; they're not uh, diminishing. So, uh, writing text uh, used to be translated from English because English is the the, vi the most widespread language, and uh, other companies have engaged in writing uh, exactly in English. This company. Uh, companies, for example, were in uh, French and uh, uh, Philippines uh, with the good uh, uh, other entertaining things. But uh, now we have um, many languages in many countries, and uh, people want us to translate it faster and uh, beautifully. And uh, the company simply does not have time for that. Uh, they simply wanted to have this pace, uh, and. Um, we do understand that um, a company uh, can approach a translator with uh, the, the following. Uh, you are doing your job so well, and do you want maybe to try yourself from this to that language, and we are going to help you with that. So do uh, other people, uh, except for Katya, who are engaged in the marketing or transcreation? Yes, we have so so called um, plenty of people, but in fact, um, we are so happy that we have more than one person, so we are already a team. So the translation. Um, uh, interlinear translation, let's talk about that. And I'm even uh, afraid to suppose something. And uh, here we're talking about uh, from a very uh, rare language, uh, from not widespread language. And uh, here we need an interlinear translation. And we are going to take it from our uh, dear uh, machine translation. And we do understand that there are different uh, uh, engines, uh, and uh, we have plenty of choice, and we're not going to compare them all, and we don't have uh, these conditions. So um, we have decided to take different texts, and we have tried to uh, translate them with Google Translate. Why? Because uh, Google Translate uh, uh, it is so um, well known uh, for everyone, and uh, it is for free. Uh, it is very accessible, and uh, it has the biggest number of language pairs um, and um, very accessible. So um, we have used Google Translate. Uh, and um, I forgot to ask you, uh, can we actually turn on our video? And uh, are we going to hear our um, video? So let's kick off then. So, uh, this is our first text. Um, um, is, uh, is everyone familiar with this text? If someone knows, please be quiet. So, uh, first, someone who knows this language, please keep silence and uh, give any hints. It is a Holland language and it is a marketing text from the very well-known uh, um, website um, of uh, the 
uh, fragrance and uh, it is very full of uh, different text. We are not going to read it out because uh, it is going to be too funny that we have supposed, but uh, please believe us, it is so beautiful. Let's uh, try to understand what the interlinear translation gives us. Um, here we have our text a bit cut, uh, but anyway, all the first letters there are T's and the second uh, uh, they are H and then we have different uh, letters, so please read attentively. So we can see this English text, so we have taken it at the very beginning, but you can uh, grasp the idea. And, um, ingenuity from those who know that it does not depend on the number of years but on the ability to keep their child's soul as a precious possession. <laughs> So the question is the following, um, can we uh, only look in the word verbal translation to, uh, to, to uh, create this text and not simply to, to transfer the idea to, uh, let's say, our Chinese friend, uh, but um, uh, because the idea is clear, maybe the idea is so expensive and luxury, but uh, are we able to uh, to read this text uh, beautifully with a nice image uh, pictures and worth being placed on the website uh, of a very expensive uh, brand. Ira, uh, she's very optimistic. Uh, she thinks that uh, we will succeed. So let's try uh, to connect in um, very uh, beautiful thought, Ira. It is now your turn. Uh, in fact, uh, we need to say here that um, we are not going to give you any um, s samples and um, we are in real time and looking at those texts and try to uh, understand uh, is, does it work or not. So what are your ideas? You can uh, not actually suggest any translations. Maybe you need a time to, um, to think thoroughly. Um, so, okay, the idea is clear, but what's the What's the sense? I can't hear. And Ira has her very systematic analytic thinking, he immediately uh, noticed that the last sentence was translated very uh, qualitatively by, um, by the Google Translate, because uh, we understand that everything uh, here is dedicated not uh, uh, in the idea in the number of years, but uh, in idea to keep the child so. And, uh, uh, we need to say here that uh, uh, we need to give a mic to our audience. So, someone who wants to talk further, I'm going to approach you with the mic. I do hope that uh, our auditory have heard that Irbina uh, has suggested that uh, the last sentence should be uh, placed uh, uh, first, and uh, the the middle of, of these compositions um, should be replaced. So, uh, I need to uh, state it out immediately. I'm not uh, a translator from the whole language, but uh, I'm so interested in it. Uh, these first uh, sentences, um, very um, concise, were translated um, qualitatively by the machine. and. Um, and uh, uh, in English, it is better to add uh, the, the word expression due to. And I can uh, imagine that I have no idea what's in, in the origin. I can only look at the word for word translations. And even without clear understanding uh, of uh, the source language, uh, we can grasp that uh, people um, has done this, uh, have done this work 
work in order to impress us, and we do understand that uh, it doesn't work uh, with the machine translations. But here, we need uh, we can give us a food for thought. Uh, that uh, there is a need for this um, balance. And it is quite a difficult, a complex example. And um, um, now we can uh, get the answer to our question, grab the word for word translations, and the answer is no. And uh, maybe the answer will be it depends. But here I do agree with Irina because. Um, uh, here we can take the basis for um, this idea and then uh, we can get it complicated but and we can actually compose something more or less similar uh, but we are going to be on a very um, edge of the hill and uh, we need to actually um, the idea to charge the cells and here we can really fail and, uh, in, doing, in doing things. So here we need quite a mixed feelings. Uh, immediately understand that a musician is uh, talking now. And um, uh, simultaneously I would like to say that uh, even from our um, native language we can translate it poorly without a, a contest. But if we do know uh, what the website uh, tells about or the main banner and uh, what uh, the uh, advertising is being about, then we can grasp the idea and to transfer it. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, now we can actually notice how many experts uh, we can hear with us. And uh, uh, yes, indeed, there is a need for any guidelines, media, manuals, and visual materials that should be provided and uh, in order to get uh, the whole idea. But there is a threat uh, even Having all that, uh, we can actually target um, the very different um, images. And in my opinion, if everyone agrees, this example is not 100% clear. It is average. It is 100% no and 100% yes. And I also would like to add that as a person uh, who not speak um, Holland, uh, we can keep here uh, this image and to uh, transfer it to convey here because here we can see that uh, there is a, a, a thought of this um, um, young spirit, and um, here we can leave these short sentences. We can uh, live in, uh, in in this particular place because uh, they are uh, grasp the attention of a buyer, and that following question can also be. Uh, here and uh, uh, we shouldn't actually replace it because um, uh, once we did the opposite, uh, then we failed to um, maintain this advertising spirit. So, I'm, what's your name, Katerina? I'm, um, I think that you definitely need uh, to, to work with the marketing translation because uh, you did quite um, um, an update comments and we have other uh, thoughts from our audience and I'm running to you with the mic. Uh, I would say it is rather no. Uh, if a translator offers to do it that way, I would refuse to accept this translation because here I need to know how to convey uh, and there is no need to, to transfer three or four words. Uh, I need to convey the image of this text uh, and to evoke um, the exact same feeling uh, created uh, in the initial text. And when I'm engaged in transcreation, um, everything there is translated uh, the other way around. And uh, to be uh, exact, I need to um, understand um, uh, the text in a full-fledged manner.
Okay, and the most important question related to all these. Do you have a brief added to this text as to any marketing text? Constantino, thank you. Thank you for the question, for the comment, rather. Katerina, Constantine is not taking this translation, so you can take it. Václav. Uh, well, you were right. Uh, uh, your question about the brief was right. All of us know, and Kata actually said it at the beginning. We didn't want to make uh, our session overcomplicated. We didn't want to add briefs to every uh, to every text because uh, it would take too much time. And uh, we will have uh, a dinner tonight. Of course, context is very important, uh, uh, reference materials are very important, task is very important. We know cases when marketing text uh, from English into Russian or Ukrainian also, uh, we also receive them without any design brief, without any translation brief. But of course, the reaction of the audience shows that uh, the opinion is divided, for example, that we lack materials for discussion. Who knows this language? I mean, who speaks this language? Who translates from, from this language? Nobody. OK, now let's see what the MT suggests. Do you see that? <laughs> he knew too much. Okay, I will read it out. Tornado, smart plus mirror panel and matte black body. It's brilliant, as if matte. I mean, the idea is brilliant. The air conditioner is made black. In short, the understanding. Okay, there's a catch here. I would like to say, I would like to help you. There's a catch in this text. One, one catch. Okay, oh, a client has sent us a video, and uh, if we manage to watch it, probably it will help us. How can I share the video? Okay, please click this link, because somehow it doesn't work. Sorry for that. Uh, we are creative, we are spontaneous. Okay, bear with us for a second. Okay, you, don't, you no longer see the text, but try to remember that. So, did it make it any easier? Okay, so mat is not a swear word, it's black, or it's not dead. Okay, black mat co color. The conditioner is black. And then she says, mad body, it's brilliant, and then she stumbles. Okay, the air conditioner is mad black. So this is the pun that uh, the advertising is built upon. She said that the conditioner has a mirror panel and matte black body, but in Heb Hebrew, uh, the word Mavrik, which means uh, brilliant the, and uh, excellent, they are the same. That is why we have this play on words. In English, as we see, 
it's impossible to translate in, in a proper way. This translation doesn't take into account this uh, difference. But you got the idea, right? You have watched the video. Technically, you can even add subtitles in Russian or in Ukrainian. How would you translate that play on words? OK, we need to have feminine genre here. The idea is brilliant. It is brilliant. It is. Uh, it means that uh, the idea is brilliant or glossy, but uh, the conditioner is met. Okay, thank you so much for this idea, and we see that the audience is excellent. Okay, let's let's uh, say that everyone is an excellent marketing translator. Okay, the truth is that uh, you managed to understand this idea, this contrast between uh, brilliant and glossy. It means that uh, even in such cases, it, it is possible to understand this, if you have uh, common sense. But in addition to this play on words, or play on meanings, uh, there is uh, this sentence short, the understanding. Okay, even here you understood the idea. So here in this case, uh, the MT had uh, to be mistaken, but we understand that you actually understand what it turned out. I would like to ask Konstantin, uh, would you tell this translation? Well, I'm an audio-visual translation, so I will think of something of how to overcome this issue. OK, if Konstantin is ready to translate that, uh, of course, we can see that uh, the MT helped us. But let's proceed. So what's the language? This is Polish, definitely. Here, almost everyone who speaks Ukrainian will understand that. And those who speak Polish, please keep silence. We have people among us uh, who know Polish. But we will play pretend that we do not Polish, that we don't understand Polish, and we will provide you with a word for word translation. But first, we will provide you with the context. So this is um, an announcement uh, listing about uh, selling a car. For example, a person wanted to get creative when selling a car, and uh, oh, for example, he or she wrote a selling text, and this is selling text in its best way. So this guy went to say an old car, but she, he went uh, uh, creative and wrote a very long and funny text. Of course, we cannot. Uh, uh, show you all the text because we are short in time. That is why we selected several sentences. So there were several neutral sentences before that. Why do you need my, uh, say, cent or fiat, this old fiat, this old car? And then there are possible arguments why a person might need this old car. So please read the original and uh, the word for word translation. You can get on a snowstorm on a rainy night when you can't stand the old cottage. OK, weather doesn't matter when you have this old car. Do you have any ideas of what that can mean? Of course, uh, we can completely change this, and we can say that uh, this car has uh, a good interior, for example, but we would like to use uh, to translate it as close to the uh, source text as possible. So what is the cottage? What is this snowstorm? OK, but we must say that this text, the original text, is not easy one. But we see that you are quite smart.
I think that uh, they were not really talking about cottage. I just try to understand what uh, the original word was. Can you show it once again? Okay, you want to understand Polish, but imagine that the original text was a Chinese or Vietnamese, you wouldn't be able to read that at all. So imagine that he understand nothing. Well, with Chinese at least I could have a chance. Okay, Sanskrit, any language that you don't understand. Okay, let's give the MT a chance. Don't look at the original text. Old car, so you're talking about an old car. Well, I don't know Polish at all, and it seems to me that here this person is selling an old car. And he wants to tell us that uh, he says goodbye to such an old friend, a good friend. And he tries to describe in a joking manner uh, the pros of this car to be able to sell it. When we don't really understand what uh, he wants to say, he uh, can write that you won't get lost with this car on a stormy night. We remember that at first uh, he told that uh, this is an old uh, Fiat, an old car, so we can create our own text that old friend is better and so on and so forth. Okay, so we won't re reveal you the answer. Okay, but let's take a look at uh, the first language. Well, you chose quite a, a challenging text, I must say. I understand that uh, this MP, MT uh, couldn't uh, translate the old cottage, but I have no idea what is snowstorm. You can you can smoke a cigarette uh, on a stormy night, on a rainy night, where you can no longer, uh, where you can, you cannot longer stay at home with your old husband or your old wife. But why an old husband uh, uh, turned into an old house? Romano was our expert who helped us choose text, so that is why he knows the right answer. But that's true. Uh, it was difficult to, to understand that snowstorm is a cigarette and cottage is an old husband, right? Okay, but we didn't cheat. We seriously, we used Google Translate. We copy-pasted it into Google Translate. Uh, we chose the, the right phrase. Well, we still have the basic information and the basic information is properly translated. Okay, so what about the engine? We see that 1.1, this is probably the volume of the engine. Uh, but then we can see so Juleta. What the hell is that? And uh, there is an exclamation mark. Mark. So this is obviously a very emotional phrase. And then he explains why this Juleta is so important. Because just looking at your scars. Any ideas? Okay, just a second. That the engine. Uh, is still working. So it is old, but it actually works, still works. The yes, cars uh, is what makes uh, the car even better. Or probably Wilder is worked with his car. I don't know. So again, we start guessing. We don't understand what uh, this guy wanted to say. Okay, let's re reveal the answer. I'm afraid we will have to ask uh, our audience, Roman, who is our expert. Well, Gileta is uh, a reality, a local reality, and uh, uh, a good translator even has to Google it. And Gileta, this is at the Warsaw Stadium, football stadium, there is a tribune where fans of Warsaw Legia Legia Warsawa, so uh, they are the engine or the driving force behind uh, this soccer team. As for the second phrase, it's quite obvious. I don't know why it was broken in the translation. 
when you look at it, you get scars. No. So once you have a look at this sentence, you can uh, grasp the idea. Uh, maybe um, when you are looking at uh, this uh, engine, it uh, has no uh, actually sense with the engine. So it was a very complicated plane of words. So uh, there is uh, this stadium, these other things, but. I do feel that uh, this car uh, uh, reflects a car. I know uh, Polish. Zeleda, it, it is, um, uh, it's from the advertising uh, of Shave Razor. So uh, this is only from the uh, advertising by uh, Gillette brand. So when uh, we were selecting this phrase, uh, the first thing we did, we Google it. And the first thing was about the, uh, this um, um, Tribune thing. Uh, and Gileta is, is a quite an artificial word. Um, and here our, all our opinions have been divided. And uh, here we are dealing not uh, with the uh, plane of words, but, uh, but with the cultural realities. And of course, um, uh, each and every car should um, be broken. And of course, uh, there is a need uh, for both. For Google and for the translators, and uh, let's leave Gileta and then uh, let's look at the manual. Just a second. I think that what is saying that uh, this is an idea of uh, uh, this um, razor sliding and um, uh, or other metaphor uh, that uh, uh, it is as fast as possible. So, Irina, if the sentence was exactly as you are saying, then um, this guy definitely would, um, would sell his cards. Maybe, but let's actually turn on our um, imagine and our basic understanding and try to create or get any ideas. Then um, let's create the text for manual. The second uh, trans uh, sentence, um, here we are dealing with an old man. And uh, here uh, Google has failed to translate and uh, uh, he actually, uh, the Google was uh, uh, kind of very spontaneous, uh, if you can say that. Um, and uh, any assumptions? So let me voice them. Uh, and uh, here we are dealing uh, with, uh, with the manual gear box. And um, maybe is it a manual, um, maybe manual uh, which was lost, and uh, maybe there's the idea that you're not going to uh, go far away without uh, this manual. Maybe um, uh, an author is suggesting that uh, you need to deal with your problems without manual. Maybe uh, you're dealing with the um, with the handbrake, and of course, um, maybe you are pretty close. So uh, let's then do not keep an intrigue no more. So the sense of this sense is not really clear for me, but anyway, we can convey the idea that something wrong has happened with the handbrake. And uh, we all do it all the time. Uh, it was so interesting to look at the Russian translation. Um, uh, kind of, uh, you cannot take uh, the manual and um, you cannot get far from that. Uh, and the most important thing, uh, and uh, here we're talking about the last 
sentence, uh, which is pretty simple and can be translated into uh, Russian. And uh, the very last uh, sentence, um, the car may not be a typical cane magnet. So here the sentence is not ended. We simply cut it for you. Um, here is, there is a need for uh, uh, an explanation that the car is not a typical one. And someone who is interested in um, sport cards, um, this person will definitely understand the idea. And cane magnet, uh, it's actually a cane for old people. But magnet is a magnet here indeed. So what's uh, the magnet and uh, uh, what's the walking stick? And we do have ideas. Maybe uh, this car uh, does not grab uh, women's attention. Uh, why? Did, how did you get to those ideas? Because um, magnet, it is all about the paying attention, the grasping attention. And uh, I know a bit Polish, Olga. Uh, we are going to uh, to involve you in the market translation. Yes, indeed, you are right. And here we are dealing with the uh, magnet for, uh, for pretty young girls. We have a question. Usually, uh, when um, something is being done through the word for word translation, so you need to, to uh, select uh, the most possible translations and uh, maybe to use the Ukrainian word for word translation or maybe German one um, because maybe it. Uh, would make sense to translate it uh, into English or into German. Um, of course, we could uh, translate it uh, into Ukrainian to uh, make uh, the task easier for you. And you're absolutely right. Here we have um, one more issue. Here we have uh, the very exact uh, uh, remark because while you're choosing a word for word translation, of course, it is better to select um, uh, um, the, uh, the right languages um, for these translations. And it used to be uh, a very different translation uh, with uh, this. Um, uh, machine translations, and um, we are so surprised to see that the results uh, do not really um, make a world of difference. And plus, uh, we are not able to select uh, really uh, uh, rare languages. So Hebrew uh, is not a very rare language for you. Yes, uh, yes uh, thanks to you. So we are using this particular language uh, exactly for these training purposes. But it is really important to look at how uh, these uh, technologies um, uh, make the difference. So I have selected uh, the Irina's hip hotis uh, uh, because uh, uh, automobile cannot be uh, a real can, and so here's a joke, and, uh, and uh, there is no any, I don't know, uh, uh, world of difference, and we are so surprise while we are taking every step uh, um, translating through the machine and uh, we are today in the experiment which is so exciting to do so um, we are still have um, several uh, elements. So we can have other problems uh, with the Russian because Google can um, actually f fail to understand that uh, the languages are different. Uh, partially you are right, but I have an idea that uh, maybe artificially uh, there are people who can 
actually differ this language. Practically, I have uh, the same comment. I am a translator from Polish, so and I can see that there are traces from the English. And uh, um, so th this is a question, not uh, uh, how the language is close, but uh, the level of artificial intelligence uh, of, of the machine translation. So what's our con con conclusion? Should the machine translation be with us or not to maintain, to maintain or to have the work? We need to find uh, the advertising from French languages. So let's then go further. And, uh, so very short text is our next example. Uh, no, you can see everything pretty clear there. The first letter is S and uh, K, and it is also uh, the mentioned before language. And let's look at the word for word translation. Oh, can you please dwell upon what we are seeing now? Let me give you a small uh, information or picture. Um, was it helpful? Here you can see the picture, different range of uh, uh, groceries, and this is an advertisement of a uh, um, uh, uh, shop, a big shop, and uh, uh, this shop is really big and uh, it continues to do something illegal and uh, out of the law for many countries. And here we can see a criminal smack. I do understand that this is a is about a, a big network. Uh, it, it was a very good attempt, but you was oh, you were wrong. Maybe everything is so simple, and uh, here we have the lowest prices, and um, this um, supermarket uh, is trying to follow all the prices. Maybe uh, we are dealing here with the caring uh, for children. Uh, maybe um, uh, this is the biggest network, but they are trying to pay attention to the details. Uh, and of course, they do have devil. I am out of the version. I have a remark. The second part is clearly wrong, wrongly translated. We are trying to decode it. And uh, uh, maybe the first um, part is also wrong. How can uh, we be 100% sure? Here, if it is a really big supermarket, and um, someone wants uh, to uh, translate in a very fast manner, then uh, the idea is convened. And, um, I'm afraid uh, there is a hint with these S and key letters. So, hello, everyone. Maybe um, uh, buying um, in a wholesale option, uh, it is much more better option. So, the bigger um, purchasing is, uh, the bigger money saving you have. What's your name? Anastasia. Dmitry and Anastasia. Uh, they were almost right to the idea. So the idea here that the Latin is, uh, it is the scene about these small money, penny. So they are trying to save our money. But. Uh, and it is of a high importance for the Holland culture, as uh, Nigel Sage has um, pointed out to that, and we are so grateful to him for his support on that. And um, so here we are dealing with this uh, uh, coin, and here we are trying to resolve uh, this. Uh, 
uh, jigsaw. Here, we can say that this is not the best possible uh, result for the World for World translation, but as we are using here the Latin letters, I would Google Latin and maybe I would um, use multitron.com, uh, um, which would give me a hint. And I would then clarify um, my received information. Um, and uh, anyway, it, it is not an easy thing to translate. Uh, what do we have next? Do you remember? <laughs> Okay, and here we have uh, something in Russian. Uh, this is bonus for you. Uh, this is not part of scientific experiment. Uh, this is just an ad break so you can have fun and relax. Uh, this is a mini quiz for you. Uh, this is Google translation of a phrase in original that the document has to contain number or uh, the number for every shot. So try to guess what the original sounded like. Well, if the image is not an illustration to the text, I would say that probably this was a tender documentation, documentation for call for proposals. Well, but not an auction, right? Well, that's just an option, just a translation. Maybe it was a shot, it was something like a, a shot, a photography shot. Great idea, I didn't even think about that. I think the number of uh, lot for every party, and we have a new winner. And it's not surprising, but not uh, for each vaccine, but for every dose, every shot. This is exactly text, uh, pharmaceutical text for each shot. Uh, this is a dose of, vaccine, of a vaccine. So here machine translation uh, made us laugh a little bit, so this example was just to make you laugh, but even this example contained something strange, and uh, we managed to understand that. Okay, let's continue. We had fun, and now? <laughs> The task is a little bit different here. You don't have to guess the original text, but you need to try to remember to read this reference for reference to something, something that you might know, might recognize. This is an English word for word translation made by Google Translate, and the original was in Russian. Any ideas? <laughs> the first word is ready. Okay. Do you know? Anya Ivanchenko, just a second. So that's just a wild guess. Tell me. It seems to me that uh, this is about, about vacuum cleaner. Okay, a vacuum cleaner uh, that can uh, serve you for a long time. Any guesses, but uh, okay, that was a guess, but you don't recognize the original text that you might know. Okay, another, another version. It seems to me that this is about. Uh, Mm. This is about um, milk tubes or milking tubes. It seems to me that this is something related to, to uh, uh, feeding children and something with artificial feeding. Uh, this is an interesting guess. And uh, yes, so this reference to breastfeeding has something to do with the original. That's true. 
But we are guessing uh, the, uh, the, uh, what uh, this text is about, we, but we cannot guess the reference. Uh, this is a famous ad. We haven't created it ourselves. Okay, let us reveal the secret. Uh, this is a famous ad of a Soviet company which was created by Vladimir Mayakovsky and Alexander Rochenko and this is a classic example of a poster, of an ad poster and it seems to me that many of you have seen it. I haven't seen it. Now you know, now you know. Okay, we had fun, and I think we can proceed to conclusions, to some serious uh, thoughts. So we are serious people. We took a look at several examples. I cannot say that all of them cover all the spectrum of our work, but we had several interesting examples that are not easy for machine translation, but they were not difficult for you. They didn't break you. So can we make any conclusions about the use of machine translation in transcreation, in creative translation, in marketing, advertising, so on and so forth? So do you have any conclusions to make? Irina wants to say something. Well, what if our translation can be used for getting new ideas, definitely, and for primary evaluation? of the text, because in the first case, if you have a visual imagery, if you have a brief, and if you have a word for word translation, you can do something with that. Because it often happens that even if you know the original text, the original language, uh, the uh, translated sentence or phrase are completely different. I do agree with you. I do agree that this use of machine translation would be really useful. We can use it just to get new ideas, to generate new ideas, based on which we can think of something which would be good to use. Victor, taking a look at those examples uh, using the language of math, the volume of text is uh, it's different uh, to the use of, uh, or to the, um, uh, to whether the translation would be simple. It is negatively, inversely related. Well, there are many uh, examples uh, that uh, machine translation doesn't really work. Do you have any ideas what can break the machine translation? Uh, for example, we. Uh, did see these cultural realities, this reference, play on words, where machine failed. What can be other problems, other challenges with machine translation, which could give us the chance to continue working as translators? Okay, Anna knows. Anna Ivanchenko. Well, in uh, uh, subtitles and film translations, if you need to describe, if you need to show that as a person uh, um, makes mistakes or uh, talks with a strange accent or misses words or characters, this is what happens in ads or marketing text. This is where Google Translate can go wrong, can fail. Of course, in addition to cultural references, uh, there are some particularities of uh, uh, lexicon or some mistakes where machine translation really can fail. We have another idea. I think that uh, these examples proved that Google Translate will fail in all cases because all of us here, uh, we managed to understand the source language. But of course, we won't uh, get together in dozens to do that because it won't be, it won't be economically feasible. And we have so many people here, and uh, quite smart people, I would say. I must note that we chose translation into, uh, into Ukrainian or Russian, I mean with English used as uh, an intermediary language. 
and from languages so that we more or less understand. But can you imagine that we are translated from Urdu, that we need to translate from Urdu into Korean? And here where we have a problem, it is quite difficult to find a translator. I think that would be almost impossible, although I don't know, maybe in this language pair it would be easy, but imagine an exotic language pair, or for example, they would like uh, to send uh, this uh, thing to, uh, to this country. So you are right that uh, for more popular languages it is easier to find a translator. Uh, who knows both languages? I really like this idea that uh, we managed to uh, fight the machine translation together. It's good when we see that uh, that uh, there is a mistake or something stupid, but there are situations when uh, the phrase is quite logical, and we can think that, uh, we think that it is right if you don't have reference materials or brief. For example, that snowstorm. I don't really know where did it come from because in the next sent in another sentence this same phrase was translated in a different way well it's it's like an iceberg that uh, our titanic can break against because we cannot forecast this uh, of course we will add that uh, to the challenges of machine translation are there any things that can cause the machine translation to fail uh, it it can happen that the translation seems right, but there was a play on words in the translation, for example, the little ones, which we didn't really need. I do, I do agree with you. We didn't need it, and so the client didn't need it. Any other ideas? What are other potential ways for the machine to fail? Uh, Irina has another idea, but we will give her the microphone. I would, wouldn't use uh, machine translation because it is obvious that uh, uh, I can easily make a mistake. But I think that uh, this use of word for word translation uh, threats us uh, to leave us with our job because marketologists who know well the topic, who know everything about the snowstorm, about cottage, they won't ask a translator to, to do the job. They will create uh, the original slogan in the target language themselves. Well, it has sense. Yelena, you, you are always providing smart ideas. That's why they, fortunately, they don't, don't do that. They can do that, but they don't do that. We don't really know who does what, because this is survival, survival bias. We only see what comes through us, and we don't see what doesn't come. Maybe this is just the tip of an iceberg. Irina also had a comment. Just a sec. If we are working with a word-for-word -word translation, some cultural layers, uh, which were there in the original text, they might be lost because we don't know the original language. For example, French, uh, they have these Madeleines uh, in uh, Marcel Proust's novels, and uh, there is a huge layer of culture related to that. So we need to uh, find uh, something which would be understood for the target audience. But uh, the, when we use uh, this word for word translation, we won't even understand that this is uh, the reference to realities. Yes, reality, realities might be the same, but uh, we also have quotes. We didn't discuss quotes. It might be quotes from a famous uh, song or a famous novel from a cult film we won't be able to recognize it in a word for word translation. But, well, it might happen that we will guess that. Why don't you trust in us? I would also like to add that machine translation can uh, fail when there are mistakes or errors in the original, because unfortunately some advertising materials, they do have typos, they do, do have punctuation errors, and uh, MT can just fail and to read it as a proper punctuation. 
In my own experience, I know that very often it can change the sense of the uh, phrase completely. Uh, the person who knows the original text, the original language, uh, uh, they can easily spot the typo or the error. Moreover, there might be a factual mistake, factual error, uh, but uh, we as human beings, we can also miss uh, this error. But as for typos, we know that Google always suggests. Did you want to say that instead of that? So Google sometimes knows what we wanted to say. It seems to me that uh, one of the challenges which uh, makes uh, MT different from human beings is sarcasm. Oh, we managed to get there. Uh, so what the machine is going to do with that? This is exactly this type of thought Gareth Mead already voiced it to that because uh, uh, very exact remark. Uh, thank you so much, Olga. We are going to take you and our team. In terms of the Polish text, uh, I uh, fail to understand uh, why I don't like it, because uh, uh, not, it was written not by a professional, not by an expert mark, market specialist. Um, of course, um, uh, there are different sorts of uh, market experts. Uh, and another hidden rock here, there is an idea that uh, there is a different um, uh, idea of um, um, nouns, pronouns, and um, uh, reversion. And of course, um, all these things should be included in uh, uh, tasks. But um, anyway, we can fail to understand the tone of voice. Uh, which is of a high importance in advertising, and everyone understands that it does exist. Uh, so the tone of voice, the authors uh, are delivering to us the information. So uh, what are our conclusions uh, here? I think that we have uh, some time left, and uh, the auditory would agree with that. So uh, we need to see what would lie ahead. And um, in all uh, provided text, uh, the machine translations did well and even better if we are working with the technical text where uh, there is a high value. Uh, of, uh, terms. And here we can simply uh, create another type of text. But anyway, uh, we need to, uh, to leave further. Uh, so I relax now. No, you shouldn't be. When uh, we were preparing the text, we were so excited to show how the machine translation is failing. And today we have lost um, our first document, uh, um, which in includes uh, the um, Polish um, uh, text version. And then I uh, have decided to translate it uh, from the very beginning. And uh, I had Dipple, a program opened on my laptop, because first we use uh, Google, and now uh, we have a Dipple translation. Just look at that. Uh, so all our optimistic uh, prognosis uh, are no longer relevant. And we're not here about the kitchen here. And the second text, let's have a look at the translation. It is about the menu, a menu for user. And um, then uh, we first tried DeepPool uh, machine translation, and then we tried uh, Google. And today, three weeks after uh, the, the first uh, version, Google uh, actually delivered to, to us another translation. Uh, we 
actually uh, spend no time teaching it. Um, so we actually um, tried it again. So what is our prognosis? Now we have this check mark. I do think that uh, in the next uh, two weeks we are safe. We are so optimistic. We do have for two weeks, so let's celebrate these two weeks. And here we would like to adjourn our meeting. You are such a wonderful auditory. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, our slides are over, but we are promising to repeat.